I th was always interested in theater. Um, I, my mother was a bassoonist uh, by training. Um, she was the first bassoon of New York City Opera when she was 18 years old. And uh, we moved, uh, my family moved to a small town in Louisiana, Lake Charles, Louisiana, uh, when I was two, at which point it became difficult for my mother to find many outlets for her uh, music, so she became an amateur actress. Um, and played Linda Lohman and wow. uh, this is and, a and Frank's mother at the, in the Lake Charles uh, Little Theater, um, and and those were incredibly intense experiences for me watching her. Um, I, I think she started acting when I was about five. Did you watch rehearsals too? No, I don't remember ever watching rehearsals. I remember uh, helping her with her lines, um, uh, but uh, I mostly remember the performances. And I remember, um, especially in Death of the Salesman, oh, sort of yeah. seeing uh, the effect that she had on people at the end. I remember the, the Linda Lohman speech at Willie Lohman's grave and, and sort of seeing people all around the theater um, in the audience crying. It was done in the round, so you could really see my Sunday school teacher sitting right across from me, sort of breaking down in tears, wow. and I was That's impressed uh, by that. So, you know, uh, some combination of... Oedipus and narcissism had something to do with it. Um, <laughs> and uh, my father is a, also a musician, but he was a, a, he's a, he's a great lover of poetry and a reciter of poetry. So we grew up, we were given a dollar for every poem that we could memorize. Um, and he, How many poems did you memorize? Oh, lots. I, I have lots and lots. Really? Of yeah, I can. Do you, I, mean, I don't want forever. you to perform them right now, but what, like, what kind of poems were they? Um, were they always? Pretty much everything by Lewis Carroll. Uh, oh. I can, I, I can still all do the... all of the Wallace <laughs> and the Carpenter. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> later, maybe later. the finale. And uh, a lot of Lewis Carroll, Edward Lear, um, you know, sort of kid stuff. Yeah. Um, Tennyson, the stuff that you used to have to learn in school. Um, he was a great uh, lover of, of Burns and Keats, mm -hmm. and especially Keats. So I heard a lot of Keats when I was growing up, which had a, uh, an impact. Is a prodigious memory, so he could recite. And like, he would just like be like you'd be at the dinner table, and he would be yeah, reciting. Yeah, he was Keats. constantly pulling out little quotations wow. and things. He's a smart guy, and uh, and that had an impact, I think. And I come from a family of readers, uh, so I think the combination of theater and, and uh, uh, fondness for reading and for literature. Um, I, I didn't intend to go into theater. I went to Columbia College. I was a medieval studies major. Um, Wait, so when you were in high school, did you do theater at all? Uh, a little bit. I was in the debate club. I was a cherub at Northwestern uh, in, you know... 25 BC. I don't remember. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I think I was there too. Yeah. I was this kind of, you know, uh, fairly unhappy kid, and 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 uh, uh, debate was a way of uh, of sort of getting aggressively it. attacking people when I was uh, <laughs> sort of. Um, under the guise oh, oh, oral, of some... <laughs> oral sadism, since I wasn't capable of physical sadism. And that helped. And I also... Actually, that's interesting when you think about the plays, though, in a way, because there is often kind of a debate. In, in well, I think in all plays. I mean, I think yes. that actually uh, um, debate is a very good training for, for playwriting, because I think all theater is on some level... Well, it's all dialectics, so it's all debate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, there was a certain sort of um, substancelessness to uh, high school debating. You sort of learn how uh, to argue either side and care nothing about either side. I mean, we debated topics like, you know, pollution control and the funding of education in the United States and the military justice system, all of which are incredibly important <coughs> issues. They meant nothing to me at the time. Yes, it was just <laughs> getting a great big filing cabinet and looking really scary when you came into the uh, room <laughs> and, and uh, frightening your opponents to death before uh -huh. you even opened your mouth. Um, uh, otherwise, I don't think I did very much. I, I was never an actor. Uh, I've been, I'm not an actor. So you have um, never been in a play? I was in a couple of plays. I was in a lot of agit prop stuff when I was a student at Columbia, out, out on the street, sort right. of screaming and yelling about uh, the, uh, during the anti-apartheid movement. Oh, we did yeah. a lot of uh, uh, street theater, and I used to do that. And I could be loud and shrill, so I was sort of good at agit prop, but I wasn't an actor, really. Mm. And I've never really found it... Um, particularly uh, alluring.
and the more time I've spent in theater, the less I've wanted to yeah. be an actor. I wake up each morning and thank God that I wasn't <laughs> made an actor. Um, I think that the, uh, the thing that sort of began to make me suspect that maybe I should be a playwright rather than a director is that the minute that I so, um, decided to become a theater professional, I started keeping a little notebook of ideas for plays. And uh, uh, I kept having a lot of different ideas for mm, plays. Mm. And, and, uh, and I sort of had a feeling that some of them were pretty good ideas. Some of them are still things that I'm working on. I mean, oh, that's, and they were, that's great. I came up with them in 1984. So I, I can sort of tell that something's probably going to turn into a play if it sticks around as an idea for a long time and doesn't go away, doesn't get forgotten.